Psalms chapter 41. Psalms chapter 41, verse 9. The title message is Betrayal of Jesus Christ. Betrayal of Jesus Christ. Psalms 41, verse 9. The Bible says, Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Brother Bogey, can you please pray for the message? Thank you for this Bible-believing church, Lord. Sound doctrine. Amen. King James Bible. Amen. Amen. I pray now, Lord, you please give us some from your word today. Fill Pastor Jay with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord, yes. that we Amen. may be convicted, reproved, yes. and exhorted to be able to serve you better and uh, to serve you with the whole heart. I just want to thank you for your almighty power, yes. precious love, and your precious blood. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Betrayal of Jesus Christ. The word betray. It's very significant, and it's not a good word. And if you've been betrayed in the past, or if you have betrayed someone in the past, and you know the consequences that comes along with being a betrayer. According to Webster's Dictionary, betray means to lead astray, to deliver to an enemy by treachery, to fail or desert, especially in time of need, to disclose in violation of confidence, and some disorrows words, you know, right? Unfaithful and sell out. If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to be faithful to the Savior who died for your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. However, each time you commit sin and disobey him, you are betraying the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's image that you and I don't really think about on a daily basis. We know of a betrayal, right? Betrayal of Jesus Christ by Judas Iscariot. Bible says, trusted. Someone that Jesus Christ trusted was in the ministry as one of the 12 disciples for three and a half years. Think about it. Eight together was with the Lord. This person, Judas Iscariot, betrayed Lord Jesus Christ. It's something that you and I can do at any moment if we're not careful, and if we're not judging ourselves. The word betray, you would think about a lot of negative things that's happened in the history. You could think about communism. Communism is full of betray, betrayals, right? Mother against father, husband against wife, wife against children. There are many stories, especially in North Korea, when Kim Il-sung took power, you will see people, you know, selling out their own families. Think about it. You're sitting next to your loved ones today, some of you. And just because of certain things that, say, your son, your husband, your wife said, they will report you to the government to be tortured, sent to a concentration camp, and a lot of times, to be put to death. People, when they're not careful, betrayal just is part of their life. When you are unfaithful to your loved ones, you're a betrayer, right? You have betrayed, betrayed their trust. And what's the basic foundation of relationship? Trust, right? When you don't have trust between each other, then you can't really have a fruitful relationship. He, did what he say, Emma, can I trust? Did what she say, can I trust? So it is very important for you and I to realize how important the subject of betrayal is. You've been betrayed by friends, maybe, and that's tough, you know, someone that you trusted. Maybe you're someone that you grew up with, and you trusted them. And then they 
disappointed you, they lied to you. Maybe during business, you've been betrayed. It happens a lot, right? There are a lot of con artists. But maybe they're not the con artists that you knew from off the street. Maybe they're con artists that you grew up with that you didn't know about. It could be your close friend. It could be your childhood friend. And suddenly they say, you know, I have a great business idea. You know, we're going to make a lot of money. Let's invest money. You know, you're not the only one who's investing. There are many other people who's invested in this project or this business. And what do you know? Like, uh, time passes by. You don't hear from the guy. And he just disappeared with your money and everyone else's money. And you get betrayed at work, right? You know, a lot of times people don't want to go to work because there are so many politics at work. You know, maybe your boss told you that, hey, you know, you've been a great worker, I trust you, and you got to get promoted at your next promotion event. And what do you know? Like your enemy or your counterpart gets the promotion. And you're like, man, I've been betrayed by the boss. And obviously there's betrayal during the times of war. I mean, think about during the World War II, you know, World War I, you know, any other wars, right? Korean Wars, Vietnam War. There's a lot of betrayal amongst the family, government, you know, agents. It is probably one of the worst feelings to go through as a human being, knowing that you've been betrayed by someone that you trusted. And think about Lord Jesus Christ, what he had to go through. Someone that, you know, he spent the past three and a half years as one of the 12 disciples, closest-knit family, right? And he's the one who sells you out. He's the one, familiar friend, you know, went against you. If you could kind of understand, or if you could even a little bit feel that pain, what do you think? Lord had to go through every single emotions like you and I are going through. And if you could reflect, and if you could reminisce, and if you could remember the times that you've been betrayed in the past. If you haven't, it's coming. You know, everybody gets betrayed sometime, right? When that day came and went by, I mean, can you still look at that person the same way if they're your family members? Can you still look at the person the same way if they're your friends? Can you still look at that person the same way if they're your coworkers, your bosses, or anybody else? Man, I'm not that strong. You know, I've been betrayed in the past. It's really hard for you to look at that person and say, you know, everything's all right. But the Lord, think about it, Almighty God, who shed his precious blood for you and I, Think about what he has to go through every time you sin against him. And it's on a daily basis. Like you and I are not perfect. We're least perfect animals out there. Then it's, it has to dawn on your brain that, you know what? Man, I call Jesus Christ my friend, right? He is my friend. And he is your friend if you trusted him as your Lord and Savior. But how are you different from Judas Iscariot on a daily basis when you betray him? How are you different from Judas when, you know, in front of his face, you know, I love you, Lord. I trust you. You are God. You know, you're in my heart. And then when you turn around, you know, you're unfaithful to him. And you sell him out. And you are treacherous. And a word treachery is a strong word. And even Julius Caesar had to go through it by, I think, Maximus Brutus. His trusted man and was betrayed. I mean, he wasn't a good ruler, as we know. William Tyndale was betrayed by one of his close friends you know, while he was translating the Bible. When you look at the history, a lot of times criminal, criminals get caught because one of their closest acquaintance or family members betrays them. 
I mean, we know FBI, you know, they all you know, say that you know, we have profilers, we are great at what they do. But in many of the cases, in order for them to catch the criminal, they need information. They need someone to betray who they follow, who they trust. So it's going on. And it's something that you and I have to look at and then review our life and say, man, Am I a, really a trusted friend of Jesus Christ? Am I someone that Lord can say, you know, he or she did not betray me on a daily basis? Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. If you and I don't recognize that we betrayed the Lord many, many times and we need to really get right with the Lord, then you always become a betrayer. And the characteristic of someone who betrays, they don't betray just one person. They'll betray many, many others along the way. John chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Lord die for us, you and me, and we are his friends. And as friends of Jesus Christ, I mean, he's our Lord and Savior, but we're his friends who laid down his life for us by shedding his precious blood for us. I mean, are you really not betraying Jesus Christ on your daily walk, on your daily life? Even look at the past week, right? Even look at the past month, this new year. How many times have you betrayed Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? A lot of times, you know, so-called Christians that are, are worse than, you know, people out there who have loyalty, right? They're very loyal. I mean, if you look at, you know, certain mafias, gangs, right? They will never sell out their leaders, their friends, and their members of the gang. And they're not even safe people. They just know it's the right thing to do. However, as a Christian who, whom you have G Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, where you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, you constantly betray Lord Jesus Christ. How much betrayal do you think Lord feels and goes through because of you, right? Because of you. Don't look at someone next to you, right? Oh, man, you know, he killed someone. She robbed the bank, right? He did this terrible sin. He betrayed Lord Jesus Christ. No, you, you betray Lord Jesus Christ with your thoughts, right? with your hate, with your lust, with your love for the world. Think about it. He bought you with a price, right? You're bride of Christ, and you should be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But you are unfaithful to the Lord Jesus Christ when you fulfill the lust of your flesh, right. lust of your eyes, pride of life. Uh, you fulfill your fleshly desires and pleasures and that you conform to the world. Yeah. Can you imagine, married people, you find your spouses cheating on you on a daily basis? I mean, think about it. I mean, but that's what you and I are doing to Lord Jesus Christ. If you love him, you will obey his commandments. Yeah. You follow him, right? However, other way around, if you don't love Jesus Christ, you're not going to obey his commandments. Then can you honestly say, I love Jesus Christ? I mean, it's a, it's a cliche, right? There's like a lot of songs written about it, hymns written about it, and I love Jesus, right? You say it, but a lot of times it's just because of emotions, because you're in a crowd, you're singing together, the lyric sounds so good, and you're emotionally charged. 
you know, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Okay. But rest of your life, you don't love Jesus Christ. You hate him. What's the difference between, you know, love and hate? Love, you follow, faithful. Hate, you don't follow. You don't, you know, I'm faithful. I mean, it is very, very weird thing to say and, you know, kind of obnoxious to say, right? I love you, but even though I'm unfaithful, I still love you. I mean, people say that all the time. If you truly love someone, you will be faithful. As a human being, we do make mistakes, you know. Don't get me wrong. We could always fall. But don't think that it's an okay thing to do and okay thing to say and something that you're proud about, right? You know, so there are certain things, right? Why do you even, you know, discuss? You know what? I've been unfaithful to my wife all these years, you know, but now I am, okay? So what are you trying to tell me? Am I going to be unfaithful to my wife in the future so I should be okay if I become faithful again? No. You have to... Look, check your heart and see, man, where's my heart at right now? Am I really, really being faithful to my Lord and Savior? Many times, because worldly morale is down the gutter, they have no standard. Right. So, like, you know, if someone has relationship with another, 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 it's acceptable this day and age. That's why divorce rate is over 50% in this country. I mean, that's, I mean, I heard that many, many years ago. Probably right now, you know, it must be much, much higher. I mean, people get married for like six months and they're done. While they're married, you know, they're unfaithful to each other. And then right after they get divorced, like a week later, they're <laughs> married again with different people. And that's not uncommon, unfortunately. Not just in America, in many parts of the world right now. Then you could see that unfaithfulness, this betrayal of a trusted friend is going on constantly. Then you have to realize that if I don't obey the Lord's commandment, if I don't live like what the Lord wants me to live like, then I'm always betraying him. I'm being unfaithful to him. Then you'll think twice before you start sinning again. Then you'll think, I mean, you'll think twice before you do the same sin that you've been doing over and over and over. That has, you know, bound you where you've been addicted to that sin for many, many years. It could be a year, two years, ten years. For some of you, it has, you know, gotten a hold of you for 20, 30, 40, even 50 years. The same, same old sin. And if you've been saved during the whole time, every single time you commit that sin, then you've been unfaithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. You betrayed him each time. Then how you say, I'm better than Judas Iscariot? I mean, because you yourself look at yourself and you tell others, man, I'm better than Judas. I'm better than Judas, you know. I didn't sell out my Lord, you know, to those Pharisees, right? I did not do that. Me? I trusted him as my Lord and Savior. He's in my heart. I am a faithful friend of his. Wow. Well, that's a strong statement. But let's look at your life. I mean, during the judgment seat of Christ, you know, the Lord's going to play all your life you know, after you got saved. And that's a scary thing. That's why Apostle Paul said, knowing the terror of the Lord. So it's going to be a very, very frightening time for all this, you know, all of us, saved Christians. And the Lord's going to be like, oh, is that a action of a person who's faithful to me or unfaithful? Is that a person who's betraying me or not? I mean, you and I will be trembling, literally, you know, trembling up in the air. Like, we don't have nowhere to go. I mean, you're going to have millions and millions, you know, maybe billions of people out there, you know. Then you know for sure that Lord's feeling the betrayal because of you. Then if you know, think about it. What things that you do will make the Lord, will you be betraying the Lord Jesus Christ? Number one thing is that 
when we say he's our friend, we say he's our Lord and Savior, but because of your pride, you make yourself the ruler of your heart. Then you're betraying him. I mean, common things, right? During the you know, Renaissance or those Calvary days, right? When there were kings and queens, right? So there's a king sitting on the throne and people who do not betray the king or the queen, you know, they give their allegiance, right? And then they're like, we're going to be faithful to you, king. We're going to be faithful to you, queen. However, if you take him down to the, from the throne, then what are you doing, right? If they have trusted you, then you're betraying that king or queen, which happened throughout the whole history of humankind. In your own life, when your pride gets in the way, then what happens? You let you be the king of the throne of your heart. And what happens? You betray Lord Jesus Christ. Because what did you tell him? You are my Lord and Savior. You bought me with your precious blood. But suddenly, Lord, get down from the throne of my life. I am the king. Man, and then you betray Lord Jesus Christ just like that. But how often does that happen? Each time you don't obey his commandment, and each time you commit sin, I mean, the Lord might be tired, right, based on all of our actions. We say, oh, Lord, you know, you're the king of my throne. And suddenly, I'm the king of my throne. And then you get right, per se. And then it happens over and over and over and over. Even dogs don't do that. If dogs know that it's not the right thing to do, they just stop. Because they've been punished many, many times. And they realize that if I do this one more time, you know, I'm going to get punished. And then it decreases the actions. I don't know about you. I mean, have you betrayed the Lord? You did. Have you betrayed the Lord many, many times? You did. But are you betraying the Lord less than before? I mean, that's the question. You and I are not perfect. We'll never be completely free of betraying our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, you know, we have 1 John 1, 9, right? If we confess our sins, faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. So we're going to, you know, have opportunity to get right with the Lord. However, for some of you, you just don't care, Right? then how are you different from Pope out there? How are you different from all these false preachers and pastors out there, so-called? Because who's the king of their throne? It's them. It's not Lord Jesus Christ. Then how are you different from all these false preachers out there? How are you different from Pope out there, right? Who pro proclaim, you know, I I'm the king, I'm the king. You know, I'm Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, you, you heard, right? There's crazy people out there you know, who leads these calls. I am that Lord Jesus Christ. I'm the in, reincarnate of Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you listen to me, you follow me, and I'll give you revelation that Lord gave me. I saw a light in my dream. Yeah. Why? Because Lord Jesus Christ is not the king of their throne. I mean, they might not even be saved in the first place. As a saved Christian, then you're worse. Them, their father's a devil. They're already messed up. But you call yourself Christian, especially a Bible-believing Christian, you have someone else in your heart's throne. And it's not Lord Jesus Christ. And it could be you. It could be your wife, husband, your children. It could be your job, money. It could be anything else. But you have someone or something other than Lord Jesus Christ in your heart because as your king of your heart. Why? Because of your pride. Right? You just don't get it. And you make the same mistake over and over and over. And then what happens? Then, because of your pride, there's church split. 
Because of your pride, you hurt other people. Because of your betrayal, you hurt other bodies of Christ. Instead of serving the Lord humbly, instead of serving the Lord quietly, instead of serving the Lord like you should, what's happening? You are trying to bring glory to yourself. You want that spotlight, that pride. You know, what do like, kings like to do? They like to wave. What does Pope like to do? He likes to wave. And then he wants all the adoration from the people. They love that applause, right? Applause. Why do you think, you know, like, like those sports athletes love it? Because people go, well, you're the man, you know. You made that shot. You made that goal. They want the adulation of people. Why was Saul so jealous of David? Because of adulation of people. You better put that in your head. If my goal is to be recognized more, if my goal is to get more adoration from people, then I'm definitely betraying Lord Jesus Christ. When you serve the Lord humbly, not attracting attention on your own, you're going to be respected automatically. You don't even have to worry about it, right? I mean, people see, and you see. You know, if you serve the Lord quietly, humbly, bottom of your heart, without trying to get attention to yourself, then you've got to be respected, and the Lord's going to reward you. However, if you're going to constantly bring attention to yourself, use that pride, and being the king of your own heart's throne, then you will betray the Lord Jesus Christ over and over and over. Then secondly, how else can you, you know, betray Lord Jesus Christ? When you become that selfish person where this life is just for me, just me. As long as I live well, as long as you know, I'm better than others, as long as you know, I don't have to do any sacrifice, just take care of myself, then I'm good. What did Lord Jesus Christ do? Did he just die for you? He died for the whole world. Amen. Every sinner out there. And what is the critical part of your Christian life? Serving others. Because Jesus Christ served when he was here on earth. And you say, I want to be like Jesus Christ. As long as I don't have to serve others. As long as I don't have to sacrifice myself, then I'm okay. But think about it. Each time, each day, when you're only living for yourself, you're betraying Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. So, I mean, it's Lord's command. So, you know, you could argue with me however you want. We're not going to go anywhere. Just see what the Bible says. Either you follow or you don't follow. Simple as that. Okay. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being what being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on, these, on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. What does the Bible say? Should you be just a selfish person? You know, I just take care of me only, and you're good? No, what did verse 4 say? Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. If you're that kind of selfish person, you are going to betray Lord Jesus Christ. If you're that type of selfish person, I guarantee you, you're going to betray your spouses, your children, anybody else. Why? Because at the end of the day, who is number one in your life? You. It's like me, right? If I do this, you know, it will benefit my brethren. It will benefit others. However, I'm going to be hurt. 
I have to sacrifice myself. Then a lot of people, many, many majority of the Christians will stop. You know what? I'm not doing anything wrong. But according to the word of God, you're doing something wrong. Because you're so selfish. You only think on your own things, but you don't think on things of the others. If Lord Jesus Christ only died for certain people, like some cults say, right? I mean, think about it. Then where would you be? If you weren't that selected person. It's a baloney, right? Then why do you behave like those cults where you're only selecting few, right? You're like, you know, I'm not that selfish. But however, you're selfish to some others, right? Oh, my closest clique, you know. I am going to be good to them. They could ask me anything. I'll be the help for them. Oh, man, but outside of my clique, even though they come to the church and stuff, forget it, you know. But what did Lord Jesus Christ say? He did not exclude certain brethren to be excluded, right? He said everybody, because all of us are body of Christ. They're like, you know what? I love the function of my fingers. So I'm really going to take care of fingers, right? Well, you know, like my back, or say, you know, my thigh, or my calf. Well, I don't really care. Right? I don't see it. And what's going to happen if you're neglected? Of course, you know, you got to get hurt. That's why it is very important. If you don't want to betray Lord Jesus Christ, don't only think about trying to, you know, leave for yourself only or, or your, only, your family only. Think about others. Always think on every man. Right? Amen. Others. Others. Uh, we say this all the time, you know. General Booth, founder of Salvation Army, he said, what's the, f- like the lasting word? You know, his last word, he said, others. If we could choose one word for your legacy, he said, others. If you are that person who lived for others, like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then you will not betray him. You will be that trusted friend. And thirdly, when will you betray Jesus Christ? When you're impatient. When you're impatient, you will betray Jesus Christ. <laughs> a lot of times, you know, patience is one of the hardest things to do, right? Amen. You know, the Lord said, be still and know that I am God. You know, you know, Lord does not work at the same, you know, speed that we work with yeah. or we want to see. Right. There's been a lot of, I guess, sins and trials that you and I have gone through and are going through the wire because we were impatient. Right? If we only waited a day, if we only waited a week, if we only waited a year or two, things would have been solved and resolved. However, because you don't have patience, you start betraying Lord Jesus Christ. Lord endured every pain and suffering out there when he had to bear the cross, right? I mean, if you read the word of God, think about it. He didn't even look like human being when he was on the cross. I mean, his muscles, everything was torn. But he was patient. He endured it for you and me. But you can stand anything that doesn't go your way even for one second or one minute. If it doesn't go your way for even a five minutes, you're like, oh man, this stinks, you know? you know? Why is this happening? And you start complaining to others, right? Just like Israelites out in the wilderness. I mean, they know who's taking care of them. They know that Almighty God is taking care of them. However, they start complaining. They complain. Like in church ministry, people start complaining. Oh man, why is the sermon getting longer? Why is sermon too long? Why is Bible study like too long? I mean, the, when you're watching or doing something that you love to do, you don't want to stop, right? 
we want to go until forever. Look at gamers. They could sit at one sitting and go for like three days, right? Because they love it. However, when it comes to like an hour or so preaching, you're like, oh man, that's 50 minutes too long. You know, I want a short, quick, compact preaching, you know, where I get the main points and I'm out of here because I have to, you know, play my games at home. And you're like, oh man. And then you start complaining because you have no patience. You're complaining about the pastors, right? Like, oh man. I mean, God, God put those pastors in local church. You don't know why pastors make their own decisions or the decisions that they have to make. Sometimes you don't understand, right? You know, a lot of times, you know, I didn't understand what Pastor Kim was doing, right? But you just follow, Amen. right? Apostle Paul said it, right? Yes. Follow me. Yes. You just follow, you know? And this is where church splits and bad things happen in the church when saints in the church don't have patience start betraying Lord Jesus Christ by complaining, murmuring against pastors and pastors' wives. Hey, you know, the first question is this, then why don't you do it, right? Yeah. I mean, why don't you do it? You're like, oh, no, 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 I haven't been called, you know. No, 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 that's not, that's not for me, you know. No, 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 right? But you open your mouth, and it's very easy for you to just criticize and complain and murmur against pastors and pastors' wives. Then what happens, right? You are losing to the devil in the spiritual battle. Not only that, you're betraying Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. If Lord, right, in a Bible-believing church, local church, you know them by their fruit, right? And then, you know, as long as their pastors are following the word of God, right, they make mistakes. Every human being makes mistakes. Moses made mistakes, right? As long as they follow the word of God with the heart to serve him, and then you see the fruits in the church, yeah. then something's going right, right? If, but you see that it's not going right and the fruits are no good, then, you know, you have to reconsider. In this case, then, if, say, if you're in the army, right, when you trust in Jesus Christ, you're in the army of Christ now. When the commander says, okay, Go to that area. Can you imagine you're in the army? Uh, you give a fit. No, I'm not going that way. No, you enlisted, and then you're like, you know, I'm going to follow the orders. That's it. Amen. People do that in the army. But why is it that inside of a Bible-believing church, people don't follow orders? Why? Because you're a betrayer, that's why. At the end of the day, you're that person who's going to leave the church. You're that person who's going to try to influence other brothers and sisters in Christ, complain about pastors and pastors' wives, and you're that person be like, okay, let's turn our back and go somewhere else. Happened many times in the past. It's going to happen in the future. But I don't want you to be that person. I don't want me to be that person because I start putting myself, because I become impatient, because I become a complainer, murmur, and then start betraying my Lord. And a lot of times they don't know it. They don't know that they're betraying Lord Jesus Christ. They just think that they're doing the right thing. But look at the fruit. That's all you got to look at. I mean, these guys are gone outside the church. And many of them are living a miserable Christian life. So if you want to betray Jesus Christ, be impatient, open your mouth, and start complaining and murmur. And probably we won't see you in the near future. That's why if you don't want to betray Jesus Christ, you need to have patience. And just realize Am I the person who gets like cranky, get angry about little things? You know, then you, you better watch out. <laughs> You're in the bathroom, and there's no tissue to wipe your hands, right? It happens, right? And you go berserk about it. Man, who did this? 
man, I, I, man, I, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get that person. I'm gonna go complain to the pastor, you know, pastor's wife. There's lack of tissue papers in the bathroom. Huh? I mean, maybe you could find it and you could put it in, you know, instead of always expecting someone else to put it in, right? Or you're like, in the parking lot, oh man, this person did not park well. You know, I can't open my door like I want to, you know? It's so narrow. And you start complaining, man, please, please let that person know, Pastor. They need to park better, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's such a petty thing, right? But when you think about it, you're not just hurting your own self, you're, ho- you're hurting the body of Christ each time you do that. <laughs> I mean, you're complaining against your left hand. You're the same body, right? Like, like, oh, my right hand doesn't smell. Man, but my left hand smells, right? So I'm going to tell all my other body parts, right? My feet, my eyes, you know, my back, my neck. Hey, you know, that left hand smells. Do you do that? I mean, at home, do you tell your family, hey, you know, my right hand is clean, but my left hand stinks, okay? So don't even deal with it, right? Don't, don't shake my hand or something, you know, or don't do anything. No, you won't do that. That's why don't get petty with little things. Think about it. Think about what, what's, what good comes of it. And if you could do it on your own, you do it. I mean, why? You don't have hands? You don't have feet to do it on your own? Do it. I mean, it's not like you're a, I mean, why do you want to be like that lazy bum, right? If, for example, if it's like that for like a whole month or a year, let's talk about it, right? You know, something needs to be changed. However, it's like isolated, you know, just incident right there. Just be that person who not only looks at on his own things, but also on the things of others. Then your approach will be different. Oh, tissue is missing? Oh, let me, let me find out. OK, next time, hey, you know, let's do this. If you're not here, let me find out where I could get it and I could put it in, right? Instead of always being on the throne of your heart, I deserve to be treated. I deserve all this, right? You don't. I mean, if Lord had the mind of yours, we wouldn't be here today, right? I mean, thank God, you know, Lord is God Almighty and he's not like us. So, and then another way, if you want to disappoint the Lord and betray him, if you live the way you are continuously in your sinful ways, then ultimately you're going to disappoint him and you're going to betray him. After you got saved, you're a new creature. You should be different. I mean, you should be different. And especially if you've been saved for a long time, you should be better. I mean, you shouldn't be worse. You should get better, and you should be growing. However, if you are the same, you backslid, and then you're constantly you know, committing the same sins over and over and never growing as a Christian, then you're going to end up as a, someone who betrayed the Lord until you die or until the day of the rapture. Man, can you imagine? On your spiritual you know, plate, on your cemetery, this person ended up as a betrayer of Jesus Christ because many people die like that. Very few will stay and end as a trusted friend of Jesus Christ, just by pure statistics. You and I don't have to be the part of statistics, minding our own business only, being proud, you know, petty, angry, complaining, you know, not realizing that every time we dis- commit this sin, we're betraying the Lord, right? We don't have to be, like, ended up, end up like Judas is carried. We don't have to end up spiritually like that. You and I have an opportunity to 
to be a trusted friend of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We can be that trusted friend by thinking about others. We can be that trusted friend by having our Lord as a king of our throne always. As we get near and near, right, to the end, right? We don't know exactly when. Don't you want to be that faithful servant? Don't you want to be found faithful, right? You don't want to be that, you know, like that unfaithful servant. You want to be found that faithful servant. You want to be faithful to your family. You want to be faithful at everything. Be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ first, and everything will work out. Let's pray.